Krishnaya Bhutale Srimate Bhakti Vedanta Swami Nityanamani Namaste Saraswati Devi Gauravani Pracharani Nirvishesha Sunyavadi Pashtacha Desatarine Everyone we can say together Gurudev's Pranam Mantra Namo Vishnu Padaya Radhikayai Priyatmane Shri Srimada Bhakti Vedanta Naraya Shri Krishna Lila Katane Sudaksham Audaurya Madhurya Gunaishya Yuktam Varam Varenyam Purusham Mahantam Narayanam Tam Shirshanamami Sri Dandinam Bhakta Shri Krishna Padabja Dritaika Hridi Chaitan Namam Vishnu Padaya Acharya Singh Harupane Shri Srimada Bhakti Pragyana Keshava Iti Namane Namam Vishnu Padaya Krishna Pristaya Bhutale Srimate Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Iti Namane Nami Bhakta Shakti Kam He Krishna Karuna Sindho Dina Bandho Jagatapate Gopesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namostute Tapta Kanshana Gaurangi Radhe Vrindavaneshwari Vrishabhanu Sute Devi Pranamami Hari Priye Vrindai Tulsi Devai Priyai Keshavasyacha Krishna Bhakti Prade Devi Satyavachai Namo Namaha Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shivas Adi Gaur Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Everyone Hare Krishna Hare Krishna Krishna Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Now loudly Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama His feet of my most worshipable beloved Guru Dev Nitya Lila Pravishta Om Vishnu Pad Paramahansa Asto Tarasata Sri Srila A.C. Bhakti Vedanta Swami Maharaj Srila Prabhupada <coughs> Then I'm offering my same unlimited Dandavat Pranams and my Shraddha Pushpanjali at the lotus feet of my most worshipable beloved Siksha Guru Devs Nitya Lila Pravishta Om Vishnu Pad Paramahansa Asto Tarasata Shri Srila Bhakti Rakshak Sridhar Goswami Maharaj and Nitya Lila Pravishta Om Vishnupad Paramahansa Asto Tarasata Shri Srila Bhakti Vedanta Narayan Goswami Maharaj I Dandavat pronounce to the lotus feet of all of my Shri Shri Rupa Nuga Guru Varga and I'm offering my Dandavat Pranams to all the Vaishnavas and all the Vaishnavis who have come here for this transcendental festival and all Vaishnavas throughout the world and this glorious assembly. There are so many of my senior God brothers who are Gurudev. And not only our Gurudev, all of our Guru Varga. Shanta Swami Maharaj, Srila Bhakti Rakshak Sridhar Maharaj, Bhakti Vigyan Bharati Goswami Maharaj, Gaur Govinda Goswami Maharaj, um, 
Bhakti Vedanta Vaman Goswami Maharaj, Bhakti Vedanta Trivikram Goswami Maharaj, Bhakti Balabhatirta Goswami Maharaj, Bhakti Pramod Puri Goswami Maharaj, Bhakti Doyata Madhav Goswami Maharaj. All of these great that everyone, they will become eager to hear Srimad Bhagavatam. They will become eager to hear all the teachings in the line of Sri Rupa Goswami and they will enter into an understanding of these teachings. So this festival has always been extremely successful. Why? Because Srila Gurudev's presence is here and especially in the hearts of all of his followers and devotees. And even new persons who are coming, Srila Gurudev is here greeting all. Uh, with, very, with his hand like this, uh, always greeting and blessing all. So, Gurudev is telling here that if anyone hears the Bhagavad with Shraddha, what does that mean, Shraddha? It means firm faith. So, if anyone hears the Bhagavatam, with Shraddha, from superiors who are explaining its deep meanings and who are very elevated in bhakti and who have surrendered themselves of hearing. Now Gurudev quotes the verse from the 10th canto of Srimad Bhagavatam in the end of the Ras Panchadhyay. 33rd chapter, and at the end of that chapter, verse 39. This verse, it is spoken by Shukadeva Goswami to conclude the entire Ras Lila. Very important sloka. Many of you senior devotees will be familiar. <clears throat> Vikriditam vrajavadubiridam cha vishno Shraddhan vito anushrinuyad atavarnayedya Bhaktim param bhagavati pratilabhyakamam Pridrogam ashua pahinot yachirena dhira Here it is told, a sober person, dhira, sober person, who with full faith continuously hears or describes Bhagavan Sri Krishna's transcendental Ras Lila with the damsels of Braja. He will first attain pure devotional service for the lotus feet of Bhagavan and thereafter he will quickly he's clearly explaining the power of hearing from the proper person with the proper mood, uh, this verse is telling what will happen to that person. This Raslila pastimes of Radha and Krishna are the topmost display of their transcendental leelas. And they contain all of their leelas. That's why these five chapters of the 10th canto called Ras Panchadhyay, five chapters of the Raslila description, they are so powerful that all of our acharyas have told that they can completely purify the heart of any sincere listener. That is the special potency specifically of these pastimes. And our Gurudev broadcasts this. He's also going to prepare everyone before he describes that Leela. He's preparing everyone how to hear this, in what kind of mood. So here Shukadeva Goswami has directly told that Vikriditam Vrajavadubir Idam One who hears this with faith. Here it says Shradhanvitam. Shradhanvitam means with Shraddha. That is the prerequisite qualification, how it will actually act. Anushranuyat. Anushunayad means that you are hearing continually and in the cyclic succession. Anu 
The word anu means to follow. So anu shrinu yad, ata varunayad yad. Varunayad means to also speak this pastime. Not only hearing, also after hearing, then also speaking. So what will take place? This last two lines of this verse are very essential to understand. Bhaktim param bhagavati pratilabhya kamam pridrogam. What does this mean? Bhaktim param. This means parabhakti. Parabhakti means pure bhakti. This, through hearing this pastimes of Krishna, then parabhakti will enter into the heart of that person. And pratilabhya kamam pridrogam. Now here is the term pridrogam. Rogam means disease. The disease of the heart. Every living entity in this material world has this disease. It is called lust. Kam, krod, lobha, moha, matsarya, all of this. Disease of the heart. Here, Sukhadeva Goswami is saying, anyone who hears this pastime with faith from the proper source, para bhakti will come into the heart. Now, some persons say, no, you should not hear until your heart is purified, <coughs> until you are free from lust. Right? There are so many persons, even in the present day, they'll make this point that it is not appropriate to hear such exalted, very intimate pastimes of Radha and Krishna until your heart is free from anartas. What are anartas? Anartas means unwanted things in the heart. There are many different types of anartas. But the conditioned souls are completely so much covered by anartas for many, many lifetimes. So if we say that no, someone should first become free from anartas, and then they can hear. But what is what are our acharyas telling? What is Shukadev Goswami telling? He is not saying that by hearing this, then, oh, all of your nartas will go away. No, he's saying, first of all, by hearing this, bhaktim param bhagavati, pure bhakti will come in the heart. That is the power of these pastimes. Pure bhakti will come, and then, pridrogam ashu apahanoti, acharena dila. Very, very soon, very quickly, the heart will become cleansed and purified. So Gurudev is explaining that if one hears the Srimad Bhagavatam according to this process, <clears throat> and then reads it with Shraddha, then all the words, all the words, they will come to him. They will reveal themselves, and he will become self-realized. If one does not have very much association with exalted Vaishnavas, he should still read. This is our position, right? Our association with exalted Vaishnavas, sometimes limited, hmm? sometimes for certain people, very, very small amount. But Gurudev is saying here that Although he stressed that one has to have sadhu sangha with exalted Vaishnavas, but he's saying if one does not have very much association with exalted Vaishnavas, he should still read. There is no alternative. But he should surrender to the Srimad Bhagavatam. This is called Supatan Vicharana Paro. He should think. You should think like this. Oh, how deep the meaning is. Oh, words of Srimad Bhagavatam. You are transcendental. Please reveal yourselves. Manifest your mercy in my heart so that I may realize all these truths. 
This is the process. So then Gurudev is saying, I know so many highly learned and scholarly devotees of Srila Bhaktivedanta Swami Maharaj who took the renounced order. Does Gurudev have lots of association with various leaders uh, of, uh, amongst the disciples of our Srila Prabhupada? So Gurudev is saying, I know so many. They were highly learned, scholarly devotees. You know? They took the renounced order of life. They could remember many Srimad Bhagavatam shlokas from beginning to end, along with their many meanings. But when Srila Swami Maharaj departed from this world, they left sannyas, they left their reading of Bhagavatam and everything else. This is not the process. If we want to enter deeply into Srimad Bhagavatam, we must read but it will help us only if we are reading in accordance with the proper process. If we are lucky enough to have good association, and in that association, any superior Vaishnavas are explaining Srimad Bhagavatam, we should not lose time. We must try to utilize it. If we do not have the physical association, of such pure devotees, then we can study by following the instructions that we have heard from them. We should be free from the false ego of thinking, we will understand Srimad Bhagavatam by our own endeavor. We should be free from that mood, that by our own endeavor, we will understand Srimad Bhagavatam. He says, you can read by yourself, but in this process, be very humble and offer yourself in Sharnagati, in surrender to the Bhagavatam. So now Gurudev, <coughs> he's explaining the subject matter of preparing to hear the 10th canto of Srimad Bhagavatam. We have explained in the previous lectures, because this is actually the third chapter of this book, it's the third lecture. So in previous lectures, Gurudev went very deeply uh, into various particular sections of the Srimad Bhagavatam and the various nine cantos before the 10th canto. So we have explained why the first nine cantos were spoken. Then comes the 10th canto. A platform is required for hearing the 10th canto of Srimad Bhagavatam. Ah, can anyone just go and hear it? Can anyone just open up 10th canto and hear it and read it? They can. Yes, they can. Not only that, but Srila Prabhupada also presented the summary study of the 10th canto, all 90 chapters, in the form of Krishna book, and said he wants this distributed everywhere, which it was by the, I don't know, maybe hundreds of millions, huh? in various languages as well. But what Srila Gurudev is explaining here, yes, it is beneficial for all. But if we really want the full, complete benefit of hearing Srimad Bhagavatam, Srila Gurudev is very clearly explaining to us. That's why this is called Secret Truths of the Bhagavatam. Uh, so now he's saying that a platform is required for hearing the 10th canto of Srimad Bhagavatam. So what is that platform? We must know what this material world is. What is this called? Tatpagyan, Sambandhagyan, understanding the Das Mool Tattva, the ten essential principles of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's philosophy. What is this material world? What is the Supreme Personality of Godhead? 
Avnaya Praha Tattvam Haryal Iha Paramam Sarva Shaktim Rasabdim. First of all, in the Dasmul Tattva, the Supreme Absolute Truth is described in three different statements. That, who is He? Who is the Absolute Truth? Who is the, the source from which everything has come? He is called Hari, Krishna, Sri Supreme Personality of Godhead, Bhagavan. Harir Iha Paramam, Paramam Tattva, Supreme Truth. And next point, Sarva Shaktim. What does that mean? Sarva Shaktim means he is the source. He is the possessor. He is full of all shakti, all power. Not like the impersonalists say that Brahm, Brahma Satyam Jagan Vidya, that Brahma is the supreme truth, but he is Nih Shakti. Nih Shakti means he is without any shakti. Only Brahma exists. But here we understand that he is Sarva Shakti Man. He is full of all potencies. And next point about him, Rasabdhim. What does Rasabdhim mean? It means ocean of rasa. These first three points of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's philosophy tells what most 99.99999% of the world has no information of. But Goranga Mahaprabhu came to give the essence, the highest truth of all the Vedic truth, all the Vedic scriptures, and he has condensed this into 10 essential philosophical principles. So then the next two principles who are we? Who are the jiva souls, the living entities? What are we? Where did we come from? Are we these material bodies made out of earth, water, fire, air? Huh? Is that who we are? No. We are the eternal jiva atma. Atma gyan. In the Dasmul Tattva, it is telling, Tad Vinam Shamscha Jeevam, Prakriti Kavalitam, Tad Vimuktam Shabhavat. Now, Dasmul Tattva is telling that the Jeevas, Tad Vinam Shascha Jeevams. This means that the Jeevas are Vibhi Namsha. They are Amshas. They are actually part and parcel of Hadi, but in terms of his Shakti. The Jivas are his Shakti. And there's two types of Jivas. Uh, Prakriti Kavalitam Tadvimuktam Shabhavat. One type of Jiva is covered by Prakriti, the material energy. Prakriti Kavalitam. And the other type of jiva, tad vimuktam shabhavat. They are eternally liberated. There are two types. This information will not be taught in any university, in any philosophical pathway, but Mahaprabhu has clearly explained. We are avinamsha, vivinamsha jivas. We have uh, a difference. We have some difference and also similarity and oneness with our source. Uh, Vibhinamsha means that they are parts and parcels of the Lord, but they are called separated parts and parcels. They're separate. So, we have to know the Dasmul Tattva. Gurudev is saying that a platform is required for hearing the 10th canto of Srimad Bhagavatam. We must know what this material world is. We can see in our beloved Srila Prabhupada's presentation to the whole Western world, uh, 
how he explained what is the material world, what is the illusory energy of Maya. He quoted Bhagavad Gita thousands and thousands of times, explaining all the essential basic principles. But if someone does not understand this basic tattvas, then it will be very difficult for them to read and understand and go deeply into 10th Canto Srimad Bhagavatam. So he's saying, Gurudev is saying, we can learn this. We can learn this by hearing the dialogue of Lord Kapila Dev and Devahuti. So Gurudev is referring to third canto of Bhagavatam. Very, very vivid description of all Tattva Gyan spoken by the Supreme Lord Kapila Dev himself to his mother Devahuti. It is necessary to realize what this world is and what this body is. It is necessary to realize that, is it not? Huh? If we don't realize what this body is and what this material world is, then will we be able to enter into a proper understanding of Krishna? No. So many persons, they attribute material qualities to the Absolute Truth. Uh, like, for example, in Christian philosophy, very confused about what we are. We have a soul, we have this body, are we this body? Where is the soul? He's talking about the soul, the soul will go to heaven or the soul will go to hell. Spirit. What? The body goes to hell. Yes, <laughs> yes. Or they're believing that we live here forever, right? Maharaj, you want to say something? No, they, they say that when Jesus will come again, then everyone will come out of the graves and right. go to heaven. And what is this is a zombie religion? What kind of thing? The same body. The same body. You come out of the grave. Not only the same body, you'll have the same relatives. You're so many thousands. 144,000. Okay, there we go. <laughs> and those souls will be resurrected. And they'll live here on this planet and it will become like it was, the Garden of Eden, you know? And the whole world will become very beautiful again, not like it is at the present time, right? And we will live forever and our, our family will be there. And we'll have, this, we'll have that body for eternity. But then I asked him, I said, well, what if you didn't like that body? I mean, that, what if that body was ugly or it was in some way not acceptable? Are you stuck with that? Uh, no, no, it'll be better. Don't worry, it'll be better. And then I said, so, so then in that state, when they're, they're resurrected, then what will they be doing? What will everybody be what activities will they be doing? And he said, you can do anything you want. You can, you can travel, you know? You can just travel. Pursuits like painting pictures and this and that. And I told, I said, well, that doesn't sound very exciting to me. It sounds kind of boring for all of eternity. <laughs> so, their conception is very limited because they don't have atma gyan, knowledge of the atma. This is one of the main principles of all Vedic truth and Vedic knowledge. So she was talking with them and they were saying that when everyone is living on earth like that, yeah. we'll all be vegetarian. So she said, why? And they said, well, because that's the highest thing. So she said, are you vegetarian now? She said, no. So why not? <laughs> If it's the highest thing later, why isn't it the highest thing now? <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. I have one thing on the uh, how we're not the bodies, and it's so hard for people to understand that. Right. At the airport, LAX, three young girls, college break, came through, and I was showing them the changing bodies in the Bhagavad Gita. Right saying a few words on that. At one point they looked at each other and they said, well if I'm not this body, 
Whose body am I? <laughs> Whose body? Yeah. 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 And, and Bar Drive told me one time there was this woman coming across. She saw the changing bodies in L.A. and she she opened the door and she started shouting. Mm. She said, "This is good, but you got to make them black." <laughs> <laughs> You're missing the whole point. <laughs> Yes. Dave is telling us uh, it is necessary to realize what this world is and what this body is. Now he tells us what this body is. Are you ready <laughs> to hear what Gurudev is telling, what this body is? I've sat in front of Gurudev many times, especially when he's talked with certain people that were nice people, but they don't know much. I can specifically remember one time in Malaysia. Your hair will turn gray and fall out. Your teeth will fall out. An old age will come and she, old age, she will embrace you and you'll have to embrace her. You don't have a choice. And then he said, you know this body. What is this body made of? Stools, urine, pus, blood, all these nasty things. So he's saying that right here. He's saying this body is only a combination of stool, urine, and many other bad things. Actually, we cannot purify ourselves. We cannot purify ourselves. And Gurudev is saying, even after we take bath, then we utter this mantra, you know, Om Pavitra Pavitrava Sarva Stam Gato Piva Lakshmare Pundari Kaksham Sabahya Abhyantara Shuchi. So here it's telling that by remembering the lotus eyed Lord, uh, Pundari Kaksha, then one becomes pure internally and externally. So Gurudev is saying that therefore, even after taking bath, one should do Achman and recite the names of Krishna. From another perspective, we are always pure. Which perspective? From another perspective, we are always pure whether we do something to attain perfection or not. How is that? From another perspective, that we're always pure. Because we are pure in heart and in soul because we are part and parcel of Krishna and we have the potential to serve him. That's our actual identity. And this is our pure state of the soul. We can try to serve Krishna like Dhruva Maharaj. How did Dhruva Maharaj serve Krishna? Well, he went and did so many austerities. Huh? We already read that in a previous uh, chapter. So. He's saying that we can try to serve Krishna like Dhruva Maharaj did, no harm, but Dhruva Maharaj could not achieve pure bhakti due to We all have heard the story of Dhruva. And he had to lament because he was doing all these austerities with an aim to attain a very high material goal. Hmm? But when he performed those austerities and was chanting the mantra given by Narada Muni, uh, and then when the Lord revealed he wanted to speak, what he wanted to express to glorify the Lord and, and, and express to the Lord how he is so full of ecstasy to see the Lord. So then what did the Lord Vishnu do? He took his kanch and touched on the head of Dhruva. And now Dhruva could speak very beautiful prayers. And what Dhruva Maharaj expressed there is that uh, I was searching for broken pieces of glass. There's something that has no value. It has a shiny appearance, but no value at all. So he said, oh, as I was searching for these broken pieces of glass, which means this great material attainment. He wanted to have a kingdom greater than his great-grandfather. Huh? Who's that? Brahmaji. So he wanted this. He was so determined to get that. 
But after he saw and had the darshan of the Lord, his heart, his mind, everything became completely satisfied, completely purified. And then he said, in the, mid, in the process of searching for little broken pieces of glass, I have found a very valuable jewel. And that is you, my Lord. So, swamin uh, kritar tosmi varam najate jache. Now I am completely satisfied. I don't want anything. So he had to still accept, and he was delayed in his attainment of going back to the spiritual world. But this is an example given in the Srimad Bhagavatam. So Gurudev is saying, Guru Dhruva Maharaj could not achieve pure bhakti due to his worldly desires. Prahlad Maharaj, in his case, Prahlad Maharaj, he had no desire. He was a Mahabhagavat. By hearing, we can try to become like him. Although so many problems came to him, so many problems, like what? His father trying to kill him in every conceivable way. So many problems. Have we ever encountered any problem like that in our lives? No. But Prahlad Maharaj, although so many problems came to him, he was never touched by them. He remained aloof from all problems, and he was never disturbed. If you become like him, then you can remember and chant Srimad Bhagavatam always. <coughs> Otherwise, you will be disturbed. So to know all these truths, you can also read the chapters about Bharat Maharaj and Chitraketu Maharaj. Do not be very attached to your children and wife as Chitraketu Maharaj was in his first life. What happened to Chitraketu? He finally left everything and was given transcendental knowledge by Narada and Angira Rishi. So follow all these teachings. <clears throat> Material relationships can never make you happy. What did Gurudev just say? Again, what? Gurudev says, never. After he says that, he says, never. Material relationships can never make you happy, never. So do not be anxious. Do not be anxious. Remain in whatever situation you are in. Somehow or other, maintain your life, somehow. And always remember and chant Krishna. Now, quickly, I am coming to the 10th canto. Sri Parikshit Maharaj said to Srila Shukadev Goswami, Oh, you have told me everything up to the 9th canto, but I am not yet satisfied. I am so hungry for this Harikata. This is the very beginning. First chapter of the 10th canto. Yeah? And Parikshit Maharaj is expressing like this. I've heard all of this, but my hunger for Harikata is simply increasing. And then he says, the famous verse, this is the fourth verse of the first chapter of the 10th canto. Nivritta tar shair Bhavo sadach trotra mano biramat ka uttama shloka gunanu vadat pumam virajeta vina pashugnat. So here's the translation. It's a little bit of an extended translation that Srila Prabhupada made for this verse. Glorification of the Supreme Personality of Godhead is performed in the parampara system. That is, it is conveyed from spiritual master to disciple. Such glorification is relished by those 
no longer interested in the false temporary glorification of this cosmic manifestation. Descriptions of the Lord, they are the right medicine for the conditioned soul undergoing repeated birth and death. Therefore, the question is now asked, who will cease hearing such glorification of the Lord except what kind of person? You know? Yes. He's saying here, Vina Pashugnat. What is a Pashu? Pashu means animal. Pashugnat means the killer of animals. Gurudev uses the word a butcher. Huh? But also it has a dual meaning. <coughs> Pashugnat also refers, the word Pashu can also refer to the person, the soul, the Atma, the eternal soul. So they are called killer of their own self, committing spiritual suicide. Uh, those, that is the type of person that Parikshit Maharaj is saying, he will not be interested in this kata. He will not hear this. Those persons, they will be excluded because they don't have attraction in their heart. But others, who are hearing in disciplic succession from the spiritual master, uh, then they will become purified. Because the material condition is like a diseased condition, is it not? Are we in a healthy state, going through the cycle of birth and death, getting repeated body after body, suffering the threefold miseries of material existence? Is this a very good thing? No. But I'm happy in this world. I have my wife, my husband, my children, and everything. So, why is it not a good thing? Huh? That's what the modern day is. Eat, drink, and be merry, for tomorrow we die. Yes, Gurudev used to repeat this. Eat, drink, and be merry, for tomorrow we die. So it's not a good thing. Srila uh, Rishabdev, Lord Rishabdev, he told this very clearly in his instructions to his sons. Nunam pramatta kurute vikarma yad indriya pritaya aprinoti nasadumanye yata atmano yam asanna pikleshata asadeha. I'll just tell this one, this one shloka. He says, Nunam pramatta kurute vikarma yad indriya pritaya aprinoti. He says, those persons who are performing many, many vikarmas. What is vikarma? It means sinful activities that will result in suffering because sinful activity always results in suffering. So those persons are in a mad state. They're not in a normal condition. Pramatta means crazy. It's like when a person becomes mad and crazy. They forget who they are. They start imagining that they're some kind of king or whatever. Uh, you've seen in movies and so forth where persons become crazy and they think that they're something else or just like an intoxicated person. Uh, they're drinking, drinking alcohol and now they're rolling in the gutter and Gurudev says, the dogs are washing his mouth <laughs> with warm water. <laughs> Yeah, the dogs. So, here Rish Lord Rishabdev is saying, Nunam pramatta kurute vikarma yad indriya pritaya apranoti. They are accepting that simply gratification of the indriyas, the material senses of this body, is the best course of action in this human form of life, and to attain that is success. They're thinking, indriya priti. To attain sense gratification, uh, deha, this, this material body, right? But this material body is full of klesha. It's full of sufferings. So, now Gurudev is explaining that only very wretched animals 
And those who are slaughterers of animals, they can avoid hearing Harikatha from superior speakers, like Sri Shukadeva Goswami. In the Krishna Leela, Shukadeva Goswami was a very dear parrot of Srimati Radhika. He had no contact with Maya, even in the womb of his mother. And soon after his birth, he was admitted into the school of Vyasa. And there he studied Srimad Bhagavatam from beginning to end. And after this, he explained Bhagavatam in the assembly of Srila Parikshit Maharaj. So here he is saying, Shukadeva Goswami is telling, Navritta Tarshai Upagiyamanak. If a speaker of Srimad Bhagavatam has no worldly desires, that means Nivrit was 15. What's that? 70. Huh? 105. 105 lectures were delivered right here by Srila Gurudev. Maybe there was a couple more making it 108. <laughs> so, so uh, I'm just going to finish in a few lines here. Srimad Bhagavatam is for three kinds of persons. Yes? Srimad Bhagavatam is for three different kinds of persons. Who are they? First of all, it is for those persons who want to fulfill worldly desires. Right? Yes, Srimad Bhagavatam is for them. Otherwise, there's not going to be that many persons available to hear Srimad Bhagavatam. So, you don't have to be free from worldly desires to hear Srimad Bhagavatam. Then the second category, those who want mukti, liberation, or they're already liberated, they've already attained mukti. That second is gaya, singing. But upagiyamanad means one who has first heard from his guru, a rasik Vaishnava, and then he speaks, describes, or sings it. That is called Upagiyamanad. The example of this is Sutta Goswami Ugrashrava. Ugrashrava was his other name. You know what Ugrashrava means? Very powerful hearing. Ugrashrava. Yes. Why? Because everything he heard from the lips of Shukadeva Goswami, he fully understood. Repeat. So, uh, so the example of this is Sutta Goswami. He attended the assembly of Shukadeva Goswami, and he heard Srimad Bhagavatam from him when Parikshit Maharaj was hearing it. He first heard everything, and then he did Gayamanat. They all advanced in their stage of bhakti. Those who were about to be liberated, they were liberated by being in that assembly. And those who had no love and affection, they received love and affection. In this way, everyone developed. So just a few more sentences. Nivritta Tarshair Upagiyamanad Bhavo Sadat Strotramano Biramat. This means the descriptions of the Lord are the right medicine for the conditioned soul undergoing the disease, the rogue of repeated birth and death. So what is the disease of this world? What is the main disease? from which all diseases come. The root of all disease is forgetfulness of Krishna. Yes. Uh, that means uh, turning away from Krishna. This is the root of all the diseased condition in this material world. So this is called avidya. 
ignorance of Krishna Tattva and ignorance of love and devotion to him. This avidya, it disappears very quickly. Those who do not listen to Harikata with great honor and strong faith, they are like butchers who will kill themselves and others. And in this world, many are butchers. I gave several reasons, more, ten reasons or more I gave for the reasons why Krishna's descent into this world. That's in the beginning of the book. In the jail of Kansa, he appeared from the womb of Devaki via the mind of Vasudev Maharaj. And at the same time in Vrindavan, he took birth like a normal baby connected to his mother Yashoda by an umbilical cord. Both appearances are true. Krishna appeared to Devaki in his Chatur Bhuj forearm form as a very beautiful teenage boy of about 16 with long wavy hair and golden and jeweled ornaments. And at the same time, at 12 midnight, he took birth from the womb of Yashoda, just as a baby does, weeping, kya, 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 Guruji was saying. So, Shukadev Goswami has said that Krishna was the son of Vasudeva and Devaki, but to whom did he tell this? Who was Shukadev Goswami speaking to? Huh? Who? Yes. Yes. So he's speaking to Parikshit Maharaj, who has the conception that Krishna is in this dynasty and he is the son of Vasudeva and Devaki. And then to all the Mathura Vasis, huh, he told this. If Shukadev had been in Vrindavan, however, what would he have said? None of the Vrindavan residents would have believed him if he had said, that Krishna is the son of Vasudeva and Devaki. Why? They had already seen <laughs> with their own eyes that Krishna had come from the womb of Yashoda. There was an umbilical cord that was cut in their presence. How would they believe Shukadeva Goswami or Akrura or Uddhava or anyone else? They would never believe them. Vrishvasis would never believe. What? You're saying Krishna is son of Vasudeva and Devaki? No. They would never believe. So, if you are a Mathura Vasi, well, then you may maintain the belief that Krishna is the son of Devaki and Vasudeva, no harm. But, if you want to become a bridge Vasi, even if you want to become a bridge Vasi creeper, or a bridge Vasi bird, or an animal of Vrindavan, then you will have to believe that Krishna is the son of Yashoda, never the son of Devaki and Vasudeva. Both are true according to their own perspective. Srila Shukadeva Goswami has explained so many times. He has explained that the Mathura Vasis, they are devotees of very high caliber. And the devotees of Vrindavan are as well. But who is superior? The Mathura Vasis, like Uddhav, Akrur, or the Braj Vasis, like Srimati Radhika, Lalita, Vishaka, Yashoda, and Nanda Baba? Who is superior? What do you think, all of you here? Mathura Vasis or Braj Vasis? Yes. Therefore, we should believe their words the most. The words of who? The Vrindavasis. Yes. Sometimes Mathura Vasis, they tell lies. Yes. In fact, Krishna himself has said that Mathura Vasis are liars. Did you know that? In Bhagavad Gita, he told Arjuna, Arjuna, you should promise. Uh, that I cannot neglect any of my devotees. This, Arjuna, you should declare this. You should promise this. Because if I make this promise, 
It may be that I will change because I am a mature Vasi. <laughs> but if you make this promise, I will have to keep it. So Krishna is using his own self as an example of how mature Vasis, they can sometimes lie. So in this way, Krishna admits that the mature Vasis tell lies. And those who say that Krishna is the son of Vasudeva and Devaki, they're liars. Their words are not true. Who? Which Krishna? Which Krishna fought in the Mahabharata war? It was not Prajanjananda and Krishna. It was Vasudev Krishna. And on the other hand, if Yashoda Maya tells Krishna, you are my son, there is no doubt about it, then first you should believe this. What the bridge Vasis say is true. So in this way, he's saying that it was only for the beginners uh, that Srila Bhaktivedanta Swami Maharaj wrote somewhere in his Srimad Bhagavatam that Krishna was the son of Vasudeva and he was given to Nanda and Yashoda only for them to support and nourish as their foster child. But this is not true. You should have firm belief in this. Try to be a Vrajabhasi. If you are hearing this class, then try to be a Vrajabhasi. First have this faith, then you can realize Srimad Bhagavatam. This is the basis. Krishna has so many opulences and all kinds of powers. He especially has six kinds of opulences. And when he is in Nanda Baba's house, as Brajendra Nandan, he has all opulence and all power, more than he has in Dwarka, more than he has in Mathura. But Brajendra Nandan's opulence and power are covered by very sweet Madhurya. Only high-class devotees can realize all these truths. Try to have the heart of the Vrijabhasis. Gaur Premananda. Grantara Srimad Bhagavatam ki jai. Srila Gurudeva ki jai. Sri Rupa Nuga Guru Varga ki jai. Nanda Yashoda ki jai. Vrijabhasi Ganna ki jai. Jai Jai Shri Radhe Jai Jai Shri Radhe Jai Jai Shri Radhe Shyam Vancha Kalpataru Vascha Kripa Sindhu Bhyevacha Patitanam Padale Bhyo Vaishnavi So I think um, Arti can Maybe uh, over. Yeah, Is it? Be down there, Maharaj, we yeah. Up his leave yeah, yeah. But I think it's over already because it's eight. No, now. no, no. We, we stay oh, you're extended. Okay. Oh, great. Okay. So Artik and then Mahaprasadam. Okay. Srila Gurudev Transcendental Harikatha Festival 2021. Nakim. It's about it's about Krishna, the supreme absolute truth. Those three apply to him. Then the next two apply to the Jivas. So the first one is that he is the Param Tattva, and his name is Hari. He is Hari. He is Krishna. Then the second one is that he is Sarva Shakti. Sarva Shakti. Yeah, but it says Sarva Shakti means. He is the very embodiment. All shaktis are in him, all potencies. Unlimited, unlimited power. Sarva shakti. Then, rasa abdi. Rasa abdi. Abdi means ocean, and rasa means rasa. So he is an ocean of rasa. This is the most confidential aspect of his existence. That he is made of rasa. He is an ocean, an endless ocean of rasa. Those are the first three of the dust mood yeah. 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 yeah.
Krishna says, just surrender unto me. This is the old Krishna. Yeah. Yeah. This is the old Yes. Yeah. Surrender to me. <laughs> Here he's saying that Krishna is for Suresh. And then the next one goes into the other. He's there. He's projected. Yep. Yep. Just change the ground. Yo, 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 you what? You said H? Naratama your four and body he's your four. Yeah. Okay. What's, your, what's your name? What's your name? Mine is Kailash. Kailash? And his name is Naratama. Look. Okay. I was wondering if you wanted to do like the Look, we got the same one. Oh, that's what I thought. Look, yeah. look, look. Yeah. Oh, you, have. you have identical. They're the same. The green color. He was he was looking for Naratam today. Yeah. And he was in the courtyard, you know. He's down there. And he's saying, Where is he? Where is he? I've been looking for him. Who are you? who have you been looking for? I've been looking for him. He was gonna show me the cows. And then he said, Oh, who are you talking about? That one who was on a bicycle. I've been looking for him. Oh, you mean Naratam. Yeah, I was looking for Naratam. Where is he? Where is he? Yeah. Who's the parent? He's very naughty. There's a girl, uh, her name is Celine. Celine, Radhika's friend. Oh, the friend that came with Radhika. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Very sweet. Yeah. Uh, it's cute. But you said he's not. Yeah. Very. Oh. I just now, like, I think, like, <laughs> he just went here, like, first day, and he just opened the hose, and had his own in the Oh, my God. There, and he went to the pool. Oh. He broke a pool. Oh, hysterical. Oh, hysterical. Oh, hysterical. Oh, hysterical. Oh, yeah. Oh. That's intelligent, right? Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Prabhupada said this mischief is the sign of very, very intelligent in the boys. Maharaj knows all that. And he ran, Prabhupada had him through in Bombay. He had like a big, you know, a couch like this that he used to sit on, you know. And so he was sitting on it, and in front of the kid in the room, and the kid runs up right on the couch and he starts punching Prabhupada. Oh my goodness! Oh my wow. <laughs> Never heard that That's one. Prabhupada starts punching him back. Oh my god! <laughs> wow! They're fighting. And my everything. god! Could you imagine being the parent? And then, yeah, the parent. Oh, no, 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 don't do this! No, 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 no. <laughs> So, so he said, no, no, he said, it's okay. They said, he does this everywhere. Prabhupada said, it's okay, it's okay. Naughty now. Yes, he's so naughty, he didn't want to show him out of school. He said, this boy is very intelligent. He's going to grow up to be an Ayurvedic doctor. And 300 people a day are going to stand on line and see him. And now he is. He said, he's in Bombay. He's an Ayurvedic doctor. You haven't met him? No, I didn't. I saw him online. I saw a picture. Oh, of him. Uh, that's the same person. How did you know that it was? Somebody told me. Uh, <laughs> that uh, yeah. I just that's so cool. Just little bombs. Yeah. 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 Oh, she came with two kids. She has two kids. No, I don't want to perform right now.
so cool. <laughs> I've heard them say it before. Yeah, that's what it is. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah, the other kids are that one. Oh, yeah. 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 Yeah.